Hey everybody, welcome back to Vanta EDC. Today I'm going to be opening a new knife that uh, for the longest time I actually thought I did not want. And so I'll kind of get into that in a second, but uh, you might notice that I have a different background. I'm actually using a completely different um, new setup. I got a workbench that I was able to set up my, my phone camera recording um, at. So hopefully this is not too shaky, but um, yeah, anyway. So yeah, this is a knife that for the longest time, like the model has been around for over a decade, believe it or not, and which is very, I guess, kind of outside the norm of art, the knives I've got. Most of the knives I've gotten are very recent designs. And so um, not only that, but really this knife is a lot larger and like heavier than my norm. And the reason I, you know, the reason I recently decided I actually really wanted to get this knife was because of those things, because I realized it would be really good to have a knife that is larger, stronger, bigger blade, uh, tougher, meant for more harder use, um, because I don't have a knife like that. And, you know, I actually, you know, do yard work and stuff like that. It'd be nice to have like a stronger folding knife that, um, I, that I feel comfortable using without, you know, worrying about breaking anything or that sort of thing. Not that I think any of the knives that I currently own are too delicate, but all the same, one that is actually more built for um, hard, true hard use. So, um, yeah, uh, the, I'm just gonna open, I'll open this. I'm probably gonna take the, I'll take the box off screen, but here, this is my uh, um, Null Knives Voodoo, which is one of the two large knives that I do own and, and uh, carry. Um, but yeah, like even this, this is more of like a, I would say more like a light duty, kind of like, not gentleman's EDC, but um, just like a, a, a very general EDC use knife. But, but this one that we're opening is going to be um, a lot harder use. So um, I got this from a recent, uh, a recent drop at Monkey Edge. If you guys are familiar with that company, they're, they're kind of best known for their, the Monkey Edge, um, the frag pattern. So... Some of you might recognize this already, um, just based off of the box, but I'm intentionally keeping it upside down so y'all can't see the top of it. Um, if I can get out of this bag here. So here we go. Let me zoom in real quick. Uh, how about that? That seems good. All right. So um, I'll just flip the box now for you guys to see. There we go. So you may have a guess as to what what specific model this is, but obviously it's a Chris Reeve knife. Um, you know, these these are knives that I hadn't seriously considered getting for the, the you know, since initially getting into the hobby, but uh, as I said, the, one of the things, the type of knife that I realized it'd be good to have um, on hand, this kind of ended up being what I thought was the best fit for a lot of reasons. So let's, let's see what's, I'm actually gonna just skip all this so that you guys get to see the knife first, not knowing what's in it. So what we have here is an Umnumzon, a Chris Reeve Umnumzon. And so this is, um, yeah, this is a titanium frame lock with a, this is the Magnica blade and it's got the, um, you'll see which blade profile I chose to get. But um, first, just my initial impression, just feeling in hand, it's actually even like uh, more tactile than I anticipated. It's not, it's definitely like a very like rough, I think they, it's either glass blasted or bead blasted um, uh, the frame, the scales, and so it's nice because it's more you know more traction on the on the handle, which is a good thing. Um, I don't know. Is it is it about as large as I expected? I mean, it's a little bit longer closed than this Voodoo, and the Voodoo is pretty large, and for me, and so yeah, um, yeah. That that the the feeling in hand is definitely not what I expected. It's very very coarse almost it's not sandpaper but it, it, it feels feels uh, coarse and grippy so uh, yeah there's that um, let's see how does the centering look uh, it could be I think it might be a little off center it's hard for me to tell I don't know if you guys can tell from here but I think it looks a little off center um, let's see if there's any obvious any obvious uh, marks or defects of any kind? 
so far. Everything looks good. There's the lanyard, which I don't care for, but it's there. Okay, so yeah, that's that. Um, let's uh, let's open it up. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot, a lot tighter of a um, of a uh, action than I thought. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so as you can see, I got the uh, the Tanto blade instead of the drop. Well, not instead of, but this was the first one that was available um, that I was aware of. And you know, like Umnumzons, as far as I understand, they sell out very quickly. They are they're usually. Um, delivered to different retailers at you know different times and in very small quantities and so they sell out very quickly um so yeah i got this i just happened to be on the reddit page blades and stock like a minute after someone posted that these were available on monkey edge at the time that was last week so they're, they've been long sold out since then but um yeah so i've never i think i've handled a like small and large sabenza or cozy before but never like with any significant uh, amount of time for any significant amount of time um so i can't remember too too well um what the action on this felt like but this um you know it, it, for those of you who are familiar like people often use the, the the adjective hydraulic to describe the the action um and i think i understand what they mean like it's it's very smooth, but it's not it's not snappy for sure. Like I, there's no way I can flick it. Like that's as that's as far as I can get it. Uh, I'm just trying to flick it um, with the current action as it is. Um, so it's not snappy and drop shutty, but it is very smooth all the same. Um, and yeah, in case you don't know, th these run on washers, not on bearings. These they're like oversized um, perforated bronze washers actually. So. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna break this knife down in this video, but yeah, th that's what um, that's what these uh, knives run on their action. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's very it's a it feels very <laughs> sturdy when you open and close it, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's a very very hefty blade. Um, let's see, compared to a Voodoo. Yeah, I mean, I think the blade is supposed to be like 3.68 inches long. Um, I don't know where they're like necessarily where they're measuring that from, like tip to which part of the which part of the blade here. But anyway, it looks like it's about the same, basically about the same length as the Voodoo here. Um, and I know most people don't have that. Here is a pair of three for those of you that do have one of those to compare the size to. So it's definitely, definitely. Um, significantly larger than the pair of three. Uh, again, one of the reasons why I actually decided to end up getting this knife. Um, so yeah, um, let's see, what, what else are we gonna talk about? Uh, so the lock bar access, um, one thing that I had seen people mention in reviews is, so there's it, there's a very prominent, um, uh, what do you call it? Like a exposure of the lock bar. And it has this little scallop for increased traction, I believe. Like, especially if you're like maybe using like gloves or yeah, like have a bunch of crap on your hands. But um, I've heard people complain that it's also uncomfortable to uh, to actuate. Probably if you're probably fidgeting a ton with it. Which honestly, this is not a very fidgety knife. I would say, at least based off the way the action currently is. Um, so yeah, but the lock bar axis is great. Like you can see, it protrudes very much. Um, so you, 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 you can, it's, re it's really hard to miss that, that's for sure. Um, actually one thing to note that I hadn't realized before is the lock bar, um, relief cut is in internal and rather than external. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell cause the clip covers over that, but, um, that's just something to note that, I mean, I like the look of that where, you know, if you were able to move the clip over, or if you get a different clip that's maybe angled differently, then you wouldn't see the lock bar relief, um, on the outside of the knife. It's just inside. So yeah, there's that. Um, Let's see. Yeah, so, I mean, detent strength is, I mean, I don't know how to necessarily measure detent strength. Well, I guess you could do this, like, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna, it's a very, very strong detent. Um, it's not gonna pop out <laughs> on its own, that's for sure. Um, let's look at the lockup on this. You know, one of the, one of the, again, one of the big reasons why I got this knife was because of just how tough and strong it is. And so, yeah, that is, 
Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That is very locked up. Okay, so that's great. Ergonomics. Um, so, for, I have medium-sized hands. So this, I mean, the handle's plenty large, that's for sure. And so, kind of between this prominence here at the t at the butt end, and then that right here at the uh, near the front end of the handle, you know, kind of generally my hand fits in. Um, the clip, the clip is kind of in an interesting place. So it's notice it's near the it's near where, right where, um, kind of where your knuckles would wrap around the the edge. So um, it's not like super uncomfortable, but it, it you definitely notice it. It's not it's not in, in sort of like a invisible so to speak clip. So yeah, um, but yeah, there's there's like a swoop here, another swoop here, but then there's the as the asymmetrical profile from the left uh, the left the lock bar side scale to the show side scale. Um, but it also kind of, the, sh the lock bar kind of creates this um, little uh, valley here, or choil almost, for your index finger. And the nice thing is, so there's this ramp up on the on the blade, at the base of the blade here, with jimping. And so that provides like a nice, I can see this being a very easy one to push cut with, just not, not worrying too much. Yeah, like the jimping here is, is really, it's, it's not too slick at all. So if you were like push forward on it, it, um, I don't think you would, your finger would slip too much unless they were like super slick from something. So that's that's nice. And then, you know, if you want to get higher up for like pushing more forward through, um, then this this little swedge here is a, is a good little uh, place to put your thumb, you know, kind of a little, little bit of a valley for security there. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I think the ergos on this are, are pretty good. All, Generally speaking, I think I'm, I'm uh, eventually going to probably replace this clip with a milled titanium clip. Uh, Lynch Northwest has actually like a milled titanium flat clip, like the top of it is completely flat, so there's no bill. It just has the like the little valley um, on the underside of it. So, yeah, uh, I'll probably get that at some point. It's not a cheap clip, but you know, probably like uh, it's, it seems like it's going to be a good clip for this sort of knife and the use that I want out of it. Um, okay, so ergonomics, yeah, clip. Uh, handle rigidity and flex. So, I mean, this is, this is 6AL4V uh, titanium scales. And yeah, I mean, even though there's no, notice there's really, there's no like major um, air, like there's no backspacer. There's not a, a ton of, um, what would you call it? Um, like backspacers or like pillars, whatever. You, I can't remember what they call these. I'm, I'm totally blanking right now, but all the same, like, I mean, this is super rigid of a knife. I mean, it's, it's, it's solid titanium through and through. There's no micarta, there's no steel, there's no G10, nothing. So um, it's pure titanium handle scales. So very strong and rigid. Um, so that's, an, again, another thing, one other reason why I ended up choosing to, to get an Unums on in the first place. Um, yeah, internal details. Let's see. I don't have a, I don't have my flashlight with me, but... Um, yeah, uh, like there is no internal milling, like weight relief cuts inside these scales. Um, it's literally just like slabs of titanium, um, of course, except for, of course, the, the lock bar relief, as I mentioned prior. Um, so yeah, it's a, you know, solid chunks of titanium. It's in the sandwich, titanium sandwich. Um, so yeah, uh, let's look at this blade. So again, this is the Tanto blade. There's also a drop point blade. Now, aesthetically, I actually like the look of the drop point more, and this is like very superficial, but because it actually has, partially because of just the, the more kind of natural curves of that, of the of the drop point profile, but also because there's like a second harpoon swedge here. And so, um, you know, who knows, depending on, uh, depending on how much I like the Tanto, the nice thing is if you, once you own a CRK, you can pay for a reblade without paying for a whole new knife. Um, I think there is a pretty long lead time, but there's long lead times for anything CRK related. So, um, yeah, you can pay for a reblade. And so if I end up not liking the Tanto for some reason and want to try the drop point, I can pay, I think it's like $150 for a, a MagnaCut CRK blade, so, um, Umnumzon blade drop point. So this is in MagnaCut. This is the, you know, what they're currently producing, um, the Umnumzons at. It used to be, uh, I'm trying to, maybe it was S30V initially, and then S35VN, and then S45 for a short time, and then MagnaCut. So they're phasing out S45 to my understanding, and this is MagnaCut. So that was a big consideration for me, is that the fact that they offered this in MagnaCut was the only reason 
um, I really was uh, open to, to getting this. Um, surprisingly, there's not a lot of production titanium frame magnet cut like large folders um, on washers. There's just not, I, I mean, even yeah, on washers really eliminates a lot of the options out there. Um, there's some that are on bearings, but yeah. So like to me, the biggest priorities in terms of picking a large knife, large folder was was those things. Uh, titanium frame, probably a frame lock, like some sort of very strong lock, uh, frame lock, magnet cut blade over three and a half inches long. Um, now back to the blade. Now the nice thing about the Tanto is, you know, you have a stronger tip than if it's just a traditional drop point. Um, and you have this like, I guess you call, I think it's called, considered like a chisel grind here. So notice how it's not like a symmetrical edge bevel the way the uh, primary edge of the knife is. And so, um, yeah, like I think this would be good for like scraping and not that I'm gonna use it as a chisel, but you know, like I think, you know, like you can do like some light, you know, uh, chiseling if it came down to that. I probably would not do that to this knife, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, and it is a hollow grind still. So um, let's get some paper actually and see how that this cuts. So not that, I, I didn't buy this to slice paper, but we'll see how it cuts through paper. I mean, yeah, that's, let's see. Yeah, that's very slicey for, I think this is a 0.14 inch uh, blade stock thickness. And so, but it, it's it's a hollow grind, so it's very thin behind the edge. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's, there's a little tearing there. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. I mean, I'm not noticing any. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So, all that to say, um, it's you know it's a it's a it's a it's not a thin blade stock, but it is thin behind the edge. It's got that it's got the tanto tip. So, um, I think it'll be a good um, a good blend of sliciness and strength for a blade. Um, just given what I you know anticipate using this for mainly in the yard, but just in general, like I mean, I could see this being like a knife that like if you could only have one knife the rest of your life that you know you wanted to just never like fail on you I could see this being it um you know I, I try to be anti-hype and I know that Unum's on has for a long time been a very hyped up knife and so um for in spite of all that hype you know I think this the the just by its on its own merits I think this knife could be a very good one and done type knife not to say that I'm getting rid of all my knives but you know um, so yeah, uh, I mean, overall, how does the, the bevel look? It looks very, it looks pretty even. Um, let's see, can you catch it right there? Yeah. Yeah, it looks fairly even to me, which is nice because I think one of the things you pay for when it comes to Chris Reeve knives is their quality control, the consistency at which they produce. Um, you know, this is, oh, by the way, it's also, it's, it's um, heat treated to 63, 64 Rockwell hardness, this magna cut blade, which is supposed to be kind of the optimal range for magna cut. So yeah, that's, um, that's, it's a very, that's another thing that I wanted was, you know, a, a magna cut blade that was treated, you know, so, you know, like optimally. Um, yeah. And notice, um, it kind of sounds even more dull than I expected, but, um, for those of you that don't know, there's these black O-rings on the thumb studs trap slash. These also serve as the stop pins. There's these O-rings, which soften and deaden the impact of the stops on the frame. So uh, I've heard that you don't need them, but it just, you know, makes it a lot less uh, clicky clacky, which, you know, maybe that's your preference. Maybe that's not, you know, um, so you can remove them if you want. Okay. So, I mean, overall, um, my initial impressions, um, I guess in a way it was mostly, it's mostly what I was expecting. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to actually just getting time using it. That's the main thing is like, this is anything but a safe queen for me. And so, I'm looking forward to, you know, as I'm doing yard work or just working around the house at times, um, looking forward to uh, using this. And also just, in, I don't have a, a magna cut user at 63, 64 Rockwell. So this is gonna end up probably being my first time getting a real experience using magna cut. And I'm looking forward to that just to see how it compares to things like, um, cause I have my quiet care drift, which is in Vanex, which is kind of a similar high performance rounded balance or, you know, like, uh, all around performance steel. Um, and even my pair of three, which I actually haven't done initial impressions on, but I am going to be doing some modifications on this and then having it be a user. That's an S45. So S45, Vanex, uh, Magna Cut being all these kind of current generation super steels, you know, I, I, I want to get a personal experience using them and seeing how they, um, 
you know, fit my needs. So, and what my preference is. So yeah, um, overall, um, just looking forward to actually having hands on time with this. Um, you know, initial impressions are one thing, but real, real usage is what matters to me. And so, um, yeah, uh, you know, you, know, I mean, you may not see a one month review, maybe you will, uh, just depends on how much use I get in, in a month's time, but there will be a longer term review almost certainly for this one. And, you know, maybe there'll be some slight changes. I might polish the washers to make it a little more flicky, um, but that's, you know, that's uh, kind of a secondary thing. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, hope you found this interesting. If you're interested in finding out more about, you know, um, real use, t like real hours put behind a, a MagnaCut Umnumzom, um, you know, stay tuned for in the future. And yeah, until then, take care.